Okay, so I'm Robert Juster. I'm the CEO of Columbus Gold. Um, as you can see here from the, um, uh, the cover page to our presentation, we're active in two parts of the world. We're active in Nevada and we're active in French Guiana, which is in South America. Uh, in Nevada, we follow a joint venture model. Uh, we're very strong at prospecting and generating projects. And what that means is we prospect and we find uh, good prospects that we take to, um, to a drill phase. Uh, we delineate targets by doing the early work, the geochem and the geophysics, uh, and put together a compelling story so that um, somebody wants to drill it. And what that means is that we, um, uh, we have to make an assessment with respect to what projects we think have the highest probability of a discovery, uh, and then we aim to farm everything else out. And that's worked very well for us. We currently have 28 projects in Nevada, and uh, 11 of those are farmed out to partners. Last year, nine of our projects were drilled, three by us and six by our partners. So the JV model is very effective for testing as many targets as possible. And uh, this year is going to see a similar situation. We have about 10 projects that uh, are going to see drilling, and uh, four by us, and six of those will be by our partners. In f we, yeah, we're on the Carlin trend. We have 10 properties on the Battle Mountain trend, but we're sort of spread out all over the state. In French Guyana, we have a more advanced asset. We have a two million ounce deposit, uh, and we think it's gonna get a lot bigger, and that's principally what we're gonna talk about here today. So I've already uh, given my background as CEO, but the guys we really wanna focus on are the guys with the track record on the ground, and that's our exploration team. Principally Andy Wallace. Andy has a long history of discovery in Nevada. Uh, he's credited with the Stonehouse Lone Tree to, uh, discovery, which is 12 million ounces, uh, Marigold, and, and the Daisy Mine. And, um, these, uh, these are all owned by majors today, uh, uh, and uh, Andy uh, was not just involved in the discovery, but he was involved in, particularly with Marigold, uh, with the whole, uh, the whole process of develop, mine development feasibility and taking it into production. John Prock now is uh, our technical director, and he's credited principally, he has a few discoveries, but he's best known for the Escal discovery in Argentina, four million ounce gold deposit. And Andre Adam, uh, is uh, our French Guyana country manager, and he's the co-discoverer of IM Gold's four million ounce Camp Cayman deposit. Our share structure is pretty straightforward. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on this sort of thing. We wanna get to the technical opportunity, but basically we have uh, 105 million shares outstanding, and we're currently well-funded with seven and a half million dollars in cash, and uh, some marketable securities that will inject another three and a half million dollars in our treasury in April or May. So focusing on French Guyana, um, what, we're, what we're showing here on this slide is this concept of Pangaea, this geological continuity between West Africa and the Guyana Shield of South America. And what that means is that West Africa and the Guyana Shield share a similar geology. The difference is West Africa has a hundred year plus of exploration history with dozens of world-class discoveries uh, in production. The Guyana Shield, on the other hand, which begins in Venezuela and goes all the way down to Brazil, really has about a 20-year history of, of exploration. And French Guyana in particular, where we operate, is the most, is the least explored part of the Guyana Shield. There's 35,000 square kilometers of greenstone belts. In contrast, uh, in next door in Suriname, there are 12,000 square kilometers of greenstone belts. French Guyana has, really only has a 10-year history of exploration, of, of drilling, a 10-year history of drilling that all happened in the 1990s. And during that period, um, all these deposits that you see on the slide were discovered. Uh, Paul Isnard is our project. It's 1.9 million ounces, uh, 43 101 inferred, consisting of 36 million tons, grading 1.6. So pretty good grade. Now, if you know anything about the Guyana Shield, if you follow Sandspring or Guyana Gold or any of those companies in Guyana or next door in Suriname, you probably have a sense for in infrastructure in that part of the world. Generally, it's not very good. You're, you're in the jungle. Access is not that great. Our project, on the other hand, has exceptional access for this part of the world. There is a, uh, there is a paved highway from Cayenne. Now, if my marketing guy did this right, I should be able to show you that, and there it is. There's a, there's a paved highway from Cayenne to the port of Saint Laurent, and then from Saint Laurent to the deposit, it's 115 kilometers on an all-season forest road, which you can see there in the photo. So access is quite exceptional for, for the Guyana Shield. And uh, we, we have a 65-man full-service camp with internet, an airstrip on-site, 
access and getting around is, is pretty easy. All I want to mention on this slide is that uh, the Paul Esnard area has a long history of production. They've been producing here for about 140 years. And what you're seeing on this slide in orange are areas uh, where uh, there has been alluvial gold mining during that 140 year period. So there's, there is recorded production on our claims of about two million ounces. Uh, recorded is the key word here, that, that's what was declared. It's anybody's guess what wasn't declared, but there's reported and recorded production of two million ounces. And um, uh, what we're gonna focus on here is the Montandor gold deposit, uh, which, uh, which is w within the Paul Isnard project area, which you can see there is that red outline on the bottom right. Again, it's 37 million tons, good grade, 1.6 grams per ton, and that's using a reasonable gold price of $800 per ounce with a 0.4 cutoff. Briefly on the metallurgy, metallurgy is very good. There's been very limited metallurgical testing, but the testing that was done has yielded 95% gold recoveries. 90% gold recoveries with a fine, a fine mill, a fine grind, 95% or better. Now here's where we discuss a technical opportunity. Um, this is a typical cross-section of the past drilling on the project. And what you need to note here are that the areas in red and the areas in green. The area in red uh, is a 50 meter wide zone of mineralization that hosts gold. The green area averages about 20 meters. And, it's, and, and the, the mineralization in the holes from the past drilling have only been drilled down to an average depth of about 135 meters. And you can see that the mineralization goes right to surface. So keeping those colors in mind, the red and the green zones, the green zone, what we call the lower favorable zone, is depicted uh, in a long section at the top. And that red zone is depicted on the bottom, what we call the upper felsic zone. The, yellows, the yellow areas are you wanna, is, is what you want to focus on. Um, what you can see here is that the 1.9 million ounces depicted by those yellow, yellow areas come right to surface. You'll note from the scale on the right that this deposit hasn't been drilled very deep. It, on average, it's been drilled down about 135 meters. You'll also note the wide spacing bet between those yellow areas. Those, wa those white areas in between the yellow are not dead holes. They've just never been drilled. There's never been a drill hole stuck in those white areas. So our, uh, our concept is very simple. We're not gonna do high risk, step out kind of drilling to try to make this thing bigger. We're gonna drill in between those yellow areas. In other words, we're offsetting ore. That's in the exploration business, that's about as low risk as it gets for drilling. We're, we're going in between holes with gold and we're offsetting ore. In addition, we're gonna drill the deposit down uh, to an average vertical depth of about 200 meters, which is still a, a reasonable commercial open depth. So if you do the math on that, this deposit, uh, these yellow areas extend about two kilometers across. If you remember that green and red area, if we take that green and red mineralized zone down from 130 meters down to 200 meters, that gives us a permissible area for about 30, for it goes from 36 million tons to about 75 million tons. Now, if the grade stays the same, I'm told that I have to wrap it up here, so give me 30 seconds. If the grade stays the same, and we know that these greenstone deposits, the grade generally stays the same as you drill it down, that gives you 4 million ounces. So assuming that those widths hold, the red and the green areas hold, this is what we're, we expect is going to happen. Those yellow areas are going to fill in for 4 million ounces. Now yesterday we announced the first five holes which validate our concept. All five holes uh, have been extended down to 200 meters and not only are the zones holding, they're actually getting wider. In a couple of cases, they doubled in width. So essentially this is a technical opportunity. Unfortunately, I'm out of time, so come by the booth. Uh, but in summary, this is a very low risk program which uh, in 50 holes we feel is gonna raise the resource from 1.9 million ounces to somewhere between three and four million ounces. And that drilling is currently underway. Thanks for your time.